Hello, my friends. I'm so excited you came today for one of my favorite lessons of the year. You know, this is something I heard about literally almost 20 years ago, and we've been doing it at TVC ever since I've been there. And it's just a fun week. It's a fun week to talk about fall and harvest and pumpkins. Who loves a good pumpkin? I do, I do. What color pumpkin do you guys like the best? Do you guys see the ugly pumpkins that Mr. Chris picked out? Yep. He loves those ugly ones, the ones that maybe nobody would take home. He picks them out. He finds the ugliest ones. They're all beautiful in God's sight, aren't they? Yes, they are. All right, you ready to read the pumpkin patch parable? Here we go. Many pages before it. All right, see that big red barn and those rolling green fields? That's where the farmer lives. It's very different than my house. Can you tell in all my videos that I live in a city? Sometimes you hear airplanes, sometimes you hear trash cans or trucks, right? But the farmer lives way out in the country where there's peaceful and quiet. It's so far out, the streets don't even have stop signs. So there we are, way out in the big red barn. The farmer grows lots of different things in those fields. He grows tall green corn and big red tomatoes and long yellow squash and little tiny green peas. Those are Bella's favorite. People eat that stuff for dinner. Now, how many of you guys are good at eating your vegetables? Are you? I hope you are, they're so good for you. All right. The best vegetables the farmer grows are the pumpkins. Who would say yes? Yeah, has, has anybody grown a pumpkin before? Have you? We did once, it was really fun. They start out as tiny little flat oval seeds, almost as big as raisins. But here's the farmer picking out his seeds. He's so excited to grow the pumpkins. One hot June day, soon after school let out. Do you guys remember when school was supposed to end, right? The farmer planted the pumpkin seeds just like he did every summer. Then, the seeds disappeared into the ground in nice neat rows and grew there in the dark all the way until the 4th of July. So do you see how they're all hidden in the dark under the soil? Right. You never know what's going to come up, do you? Early one morning, a tiny green shoot quietly poked its way out of the soil. I love that. That's my favorite part of growing things is seeing little things start to poke out. Soon, a long green vine stretched across the ground. Now, do pumpkins take a little bit of space or a lot of space to grow? Who knows? You're right, they take a lot of space because they wind and grow all over. From that vine, little buds sprout out into wide, beautiful green leaves, and the leaves spread out to catch the August sun. It's like they get a suntan. Isn't that awesome? Someday those little green buds would turn into big orange pumpkins. Yay! But not yet. The patient farmer waited and he waited. Look at that farmer using his fruit of the spirit. He's waiting and waiting for the pumpkins to grow. You have to use the fruit of the spirit when you're a farmer, don't you? Or when you grow things, you have to be patient. The pumpkins began to grow. How different they looked. Some were tall and lean, maybe more like this one. Some were short and round, maybe like this one. Some had lumps and bumps. Oh, look at this guy. He's really lumpy and bumpy. But all were pumpkins. Now, does that remind you of anything? How many of you guys are tall and lean kids? How many of you are short and round kids? How many have bumps and lumps? Yep. Just like the pumpkins, some of us have bumps and lumps, don't we? All righty. Here's all the pumpkins in the picture book, but I think I have plenty on the table to show you all the different kinds. October came at last. Wait, we're in October. The sky was bright blue and the air was cooler. Aren't we loving it? Aren't we loving that we live in Nashville and we get to have this beautiful fall weather? Every night it got dark earlier than it did the night before. It was time for the farmer to harvest his pumpkin crop. Yes. The farmer's many workers brought lots of ripe pumpkins in from the fields. But which one would he choose first? 
So there he is with all kinds of pumpkins all around him. When a farmer grows pumpkins, there's lots of pumpkins. The farmer picked up one large pumpkin. I chose this one. Being very careful not to let it slip through its hands because pumpkins are tough on the outside, but they break into smithereens if you drop them. Isn't that a good word? Everybody say smithereens. I love it. Don't drop your pumpkin. It'll break into smithereens. He washed off all the dirt, holding it tight. Next came the messy part. Pumpkins are full of dozens of seeds, which are kind of fun to roast, right? And lots of slimy pulp. Ooh. The farmer had a special plan for his chosen pumpkin, so the seeds and the slime had to go. So there he is, he's washing it off, being careful not to drop it, getting it ready. He's got a special thing for this one. He slowly slid a large knife right into the center of the pumpkin. The pumpkin didn't make any sound because vegetables don't talk, but wait, except for veggie tails, right? Right, okay. If they did talk, the pumpkin might have said, ouch. Gently, the farmer cut a round hole in the top of the pumpkin and pulled on the stem. Squishy, stringy pulp waited for him inside. Yuck! Look at his hand right inside. All oh, that squishy, stringy pulp. Yeah. The farmer pulled out all that slimy pulp and wrapped it up in an old newspaper. Off to the compost pile it went, never to be seen again. Then something really excited ha exciting happened. The pumpkin, are you ready for it? The pumpkin got a new face. There he is, there's a compost pile. You ready for the face? Here we go. The farmer carved a triangle for each eye. Pumpkins have eyes that don't blink or turn away. They see everything. He neatly carved a little square for the nose and a big, wide smile. Look at that sweet pumpkin face. That's a happy looking pumpkin, don't you think? Yeah, me too. What happened next was wonderful. The farmer put a small white candle down inside the pumpkin and touched the wick with a flame. Oh, how that pumpkin glowed. As the sky grew darker, the pumpkin on the porch was shining brighter than ever. And when people saw the smiling pumpkin, they smiled back. Look at that. It's just like you, when you have a smile on your face, do people smile back at you? I sure hope so. They do. That's how we share love with people, don't we? We share our kindness and love with our smiles. All the neighbors knew that once again, the farmer had turned a simple pumpkin into a simply glorious sight. In the same way, God, your father offers his children the chance to be made new, full of joy and full of light, like shining stars in the dark world. Do you think you could be like the pumpkin? What do you think? What's it like to be a pumpkin? What's it like to be a Christian? It's like a pumpkin. What do you think? How can that be? What do you think? God picks you. Did you know God chose you? He did. He picks you from the patch and brings you in and washes off all the dirt. Then he cuts off the top and scoops out all the yucky stuff. Who takes away all our yucky stuff? That's right. He removes the seeds of doubt and hate and greed and he carves a beautiful smiling face and he puts his light inside of you. Did you know that? It's his light he puts inside of you for the whole world to see. All right, you guys, you ready to carve our pumpkin? Okay, here we go. You ready, Mr. Chris, to help me out? Oh, yeah. All right, Mr. Chris helps me every year. So we have what's called the pumpkin parable prayer. All right, so when you guys do this, I hope that you'll do it with your whole family at home and take a lot of time to kind of um, just share about each one of these things and go around and answer the questions you know, together, all right? So the first thing we're gonna do is cut off the top and it says, open my mind 
so I can learn about you, God. So as they cut off the top, this little pumpkin saying, open my mind. God, I want to learn about you. How do you learn about God? Do you read your Bible? Do you listen to some of the devotions, right? Do you hang around with people who know a lot about God? Maybe your mom, your dad, your grandparents. Hang out with people who know about God. Search to know more. Every day we should learn something about God. So awesome. All right, we got that. And then it says, take out the insides. What do we call the inside? That's our sin, right? What have you guys done? What have I done that we need to ask Jesus to forgive us from? That's the yucky sin. All right, get it in the bowl, Mr. Chris. There it goes. So go around with your family and have everybody kind of just share. What are the things I need to ask Jesus forgiveness for? All right, that's the sin. So we're going to pull it out of us just like we're pulling it out of the pumpkin. The next part are the eyes. You got too much sin in there? I got a lot of sin. All right, it's all right, it's all right. All right. <laughs> all right, give me some eyes, Mr. Chris. Okay. All right. And on the eyes, it says, open my eyes to see your love. So how do we see the love of Jesus? How do we see his love? How do we feel his love? How do we see the way Jesus wants us to see? All right, we talked about that a lot when we were talking about being a peacemaker. Do you remember that? Looking at other people through God's eyes, right? How would God see your sister or your brother? How does God see your mom or dad, your grandparents, your teacher? It might be on Zoom right now, right? Go and think about how does God see these people? And then how do you see God? How are you spending time with God so you could see what he has for you? Are you spending time in prayer? <laughs> Sometimes eyes just pop right out. <laughs> Are you spending time in prayer? Are you spending time just looking for his word, right? I think you guys got it. All right. The next one is the nose. And I'm going to talk about this one. Mr. Chris is going to get to the nose. It says, I'm sorry for turning my nose up at things that you've given me. God has given us so much and our families and our friends have given us so much. Has there ever been a time where you turned your nose up where you're like, I wanted something, I wanted a truck that was blue and my grandmother got me a truck that was red. And you were like, I don't want that truck. My dad kept getting me sock monkeys when oh, he came off okay. the road. Okay, this is a I good example. <laughs> okay, so Mr. Chris, he wanted a monkey so bad when he was little. A real monkey. A real monkey. A spider and then... <laughs> monkey like the Boy Scouts advertised in their magazines. <laughs> <laughs> and so when Mr. Chris grew up, right, we got married. Years later, when Isaiah was little, his mom sent me this cute little sock monkey. And so Chris came over work and I said, guys, I have a sock monkey that your mom sent home. Chris, don't you love it? He's like, I hated that thing. He turned his nose up to the sock monkey when really he just wanted a real monkey. Be thankful for what you get. Yeah, Stop. monkeys are hard. All to right. Handle. All right. Our ears. Open my ears so I can hear your word, Lord. All right. We want to have our ears open and open my mouth. What? Why should we open our mouths? To tell others about Jesus, right? We've got to do it. We are the ones who are going to share Jesus with the whole world. You guys can do it. I have such hope in the next generation, that's you, that you're going to share Jesus with everyone. Okay. All right? So we have only a minute left, Mr. Chris, so if we could oh get a goodness. big smiling mouth. Big knife. A big mouth that shares the gospel, right? A big giant mouth that shares the gospel. And then, you guys, we're going to end this up. We're going to put our candle in. What's going to happen when we put a candle inside this? Now, when we're in class, I turn off all the lights and you could see the glow. But here, we're only going to be able to see it a little bit because we're in the daylight. But when you put the shining candle inside the darkness, what happens in the picture on the book? Do you remember the later it got at night, the brighter the pumpkin was? So our world is pretty dark right now. And we need to make sure we are shining bright. All right, let's do it. Let's get that candle in there. All right, shine, shine bright, my friends. Be like the pumpkin. Shine the light of Jesus. I love you guys, and I'll see you next week. Do this at home with your family. I hope you will. Send me some pictures. I love you guys.